So as you can see, I've got the clock basically running, got the calendar function mounting. It's running well. I've still got a bunch of things I've got to do. But what I turn to now is I'm going to make the uh, face for this. The face for this typically would be made out of brass and then you silver it. Uh, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to make this part out of aluminum. I got this idea when I was in Ireland. There's a clock shop in Dublin that has a skeleton clock on display. It is made with aluminum face. I really like the look on it. I think you'll be pleased with it too. Uh, but what I'm really going to focus in on is how to do the engraving. How to do the engraving using the function on Fusion 360 with a CNC. There's a couple tricks that I learned because it's the way the function works. Typically, I didn't like the results. So some ways you can tweak it and adjust it to get exactly what you're looking for. I'll take you through that. Hope you enjoy this. So we'll take a look at the engraving function and how that works in Fusion 360. It can be fine in 2D machining right here. And you can see this is my engraving command. I'll open this up and you'll see a couple parameters I found are most important to work with. One is the angle of your, of your tool. This can be adjusted in the tool library. I'm actually using an 84 degree cut, but I tricked it and said it was 125 degree cut. And I'll show you what, what the effect of that was. The other thing I did is I found that the top height and the bottom height of the cut is, is really critical. This one's probably the most important. And you can see here, I'm saying that start to cut three thousandths above the stock material and end three thousand below the top of the stock material. And what that does is you can come over here and look inside um, the model and see what the tool path looks like. What you wanna make sure on a great engrave command is you have one line going down the middle. So that'll give you a clean look and it'll come down and it'll, it'll give you both edges. But this way, I'll be a little more narrow than the original because again, it thinks it's got a wide cutter and it's higher than the actual material. You can see it starting above. I made this plate up and ran a bunch of tests uh, to see what different degrees and then the different heights. Like this was a 90 degree cutter I tricked it into. Start at the top of the zero degrees off the top of the surface and go down 10 thousandths. And then you can see all these different variables and I recommend doing this. Just go and try these out and see what their effects are. And I ended up liking this the best. 125 degrees, 3 thousandths, thousandths above, 3 thousandths below. And it gave me this nice outline, outline, a better look than what the default. You can see this is close to the default, saying an 83 degree cutter, go down 125. It wanted to go down 175 on its default. So it would have been even more bold than that, which I didn't really like. So we'll take a look at how this looks while we're cutting it. So the next thing I need to do is I need to cut the other side of this part. This dial is bigger than the, the bed I've got on this uh, Tormac 770. So I had to flip it around. You see the trick I used is I put this circle in the center here for the reason of locating, finding where my uh, XY is. And then these two pins, you can see go down and they hit the edge on my bed. So now I know I've got this thing straight on the X axis. I'll come in and find this. So then I've relocated this part, know where everything is and it should be fine cut the other side. So I'll go and locate the uh, center right now. So the part's coming out well. I think the engraving uh, depth should look good. Uh, I've got it uh, sanded on the two sides and then I sandblasted to uh, clean up those edges after uh, filing. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna melt in um, this shellac so that we get uh, a good outline on this letter. It's one of the drawbacks of aluminum. Aluminum's very conductive. You're gonna see me heating this up. Uh, typically, if it was brass, uh, it's a little bit simpler. Um, so let's see if, how we do on it.
what I found works best is sanding this under running water, because otherwise you'll get the, the aluminum or the brass would get in these black letters and cloud them up. So I've had good results with running water, it keeps everything nice and clean. So looking at the finished piece, uh, I'm pleased with how it came out. Um, the engraving, you can see the letters, I've got nice resolution on them. The black shellac really makes them uh, stand out, look nice. And you can see on the back, I've sanded that, cleaned that off. It's got the sandblasting on the sides, so it comes out with a pretty good look. Uh, I'm pleased with it. Uh, it'll provide a nice uh, contrast to the uh, brass when it, that all gets polished out. So we'll keep uh, working on this build. Hope you're enjoying it. If you are, uh, please subscribe and would love to uh, get any comments um, that you might have. Thanks, everyone.